Inspirational design professor Tom Barker is about to put his reputation on the line. In three weeks, he presents his interactive brick to a conference of world architects. If it works, he'll probably become a multimillionaire. If it doesn't, his financial backers will walk away and five years of his life will have been wasted. They're not, they're just not showing up. Is the network hub plugged in? As the youngest ever professor of product design at the Royal College of Art, Tom Barker is quite used to seeing some of the world's more unusual design ideas. And perhaps to try and show his students how it should be done, in 2000 he came up with a radical product of his own. It's this device here. And if we kick it off, just get it running. What's going on here is that we're programming every piece of the honeycomb to display changing graphics. And obviously this is very, very, very uh, crude, low resolution, because it's just one little sample. But you put enough together, and eventually you start to get enormous high resolution DVD images and video. What makes Tom's smart stab different from video walls is that it's strong enough to build with. It can even be used as a floor, and there's no limit to how big an area it can cover. Forget Piccadilly Circus. Tom's vision of the future involves entire buildings covered with smart slabs. And the idea impressed an Italian lighting company enough for them to spend nearly a million euros funding its development. But the big question is, five years on, has anyone actually bought it? Well, that's a $60 million question. And the answer is no, not yet. Um, we're in negotiation on three or four, and we've got a couple of trials working out. But you've got to bear in mind that this is it's not like you go out and buy a TV set. If you're covering a building in this stuff, you might be talking about two, three, four million pounds. This, I've, I've cut this for you guys as well. This is a With his backers becoming increasingly anxious, Tom's decided to gamble the fortunes of the project by presenting an untested prototype rig to one of the world's most prestigious architectural conferences. It's a two-day conference, but I'm just speaking on the 24th, so... What I thought with just two weeks to go, he meets with programmer Josh and head of sales David to finalise the details. But Tom's learnt there's no air conditioning in the Architecture Association's building, and that could be disastrous. And it is going to get very hot. It will get hot. But we've got a situation at the moment where if it gets to 55, then it switches off. And we want to get to a situation where we never get to 55. And the only way we can do that is reduce the power. All right, I'll have a, I'll have a go at it. I'll have a look at it. But it is quite, it's um, something I wasn't expecting to be by then. Yeah, and no, I completely appreciate that. With no other alternatives, Josh has just five days to write some new software that controls the temperature of the wall by dimming the LED lights in it. But two days into his programming, things aren't going well. What I was doing is... This is its air intake here, and I was stuffing a fan heater in the air intake, and um, and then I just I should have just done it for a little bit, but I actually just wedged the fan heater in there and went back to work, and um, uh, it it obviously got very hot. I, mean, people, I didn't realise how hot it got, and uh, at the time, obviously. I disabled its normal overheating mechanism because that's what I was working on. So uh, it just sort of cooked. So, because of the deadlines, I was actually working on this at one in the morning last night. So I sent him a text message at one a.m. and I got a phone call from him at eight a.m. this morning while I was in the bath. Um, he was all right about it, but um, he's just in a panic about where to uh, find find a replacement because if it takes me, you know, I've only got got to start installing on Tuesday, so I've got four days of work really, and if it takes two days to find a new slab, that's only two days of work, and then, then I would really uh, mark against it. Two days later, and the pressure of trying to teach and organise the presentation is beginning to tell on Tom. Well, at the moment it won't be ready. 
that because <laughs> the software isn't completed. We've, we've, we've rewritten half the software. Um, if the software isn't completed, then we'll have the system that we won't be able to run anything on it. Josh has, lo Josh has lost two days so far. There are just three days until Tom's presentation and things are way behind schedule. Josh has finally got hold of another panel and is still writing the software, but at least the installation seems to be pretty straightforward. With the wall in place, Tom begins to do some preliminary tests on each of the panels. And at long last, it seems things are beginning to look up. You know, certain things like this, you just want to do yourself. I mean, I've got a good, great team of people helping with everything. Um, but, you know, for something this important, you want to know that it's your fault if it doesn't work. But of course it will work. There we are. Two, three, six, eight, the next bit. After working all night, Josh arrives next morning to begin networking the panels and installing the new software. If you put in the 25% on, it comes uh, Not yet. I'm not, I can't keep up with you undoing the back to them. Uh, but another more pressing problem soon becomes apparent. Um, we have to test it and turn it on, but... Um, it's quite possibly going to blow the power in the building because the, the, the room doesn't have enough, enough power but we have to test it and the electrician's gone home. With time pressing on, Tom and Josh have no alternative but to begin testing the panels. To reduce the risk of blowing a fuse, they decide to switch on the panels two at a time. But a problem with Josh's new software means only half the wall is working. True, but it'd be interesting to know whether it's the number of... can work on that rather than tidying up. Yeah, okay, you do that. So basically until noon. And what time is it open? Ten. To make matters worse, there's an evening lecture, and they can only get access for a few hours tomorrow. And then the, if we have an emergency in the evening, it's... Uh, uh, six or 6.30. Until... We'll finish them, and then you've got it until the building closes at 9 or yeah. something like that. It's the day before Tom's big presentation, and to make the most of the limited time available, he and Josh have arrived early. <coughs> I haven't done my presentation yet, so I'm going to scoot pretty soon. But assuming it's running completely. I mean Whilst Josh's software now seems to be working, they've already had another setback. We, we did blow the power up when we plugged it in last time. It... Uh, it was also in the middle of someone else's lecture in here, so, but, um, well, it was partly our fault because we did plug it all into the one socket, so we're, we're going to, we've got extension leads running all around the building to try and distribute the load a bit, so it should be okay. If the power doesn't hold out, then the talk will be a disaster, and Tom will have wasted five years of his life. Mmm, mmm. Yes, yes, yes. What is it? That's the, uh, Jason Bruch. He's a light artist. But everything seems to be going well. And for the first time, the potential of Tom's invention comes to life. Tom's day of reckoning has arrived. It's the first time he's been able to show people a full working system. And in four hours' time, his reputation, five years of his life, and a million euros of investment will be on the line. Everything depends on two 13-amp fuses holding out. And the omens aren't looking good. I'm a fan, I have to say. I'm sorry, I don't like being, sitting up here being negative, so I kind of wish you hadn't asked me that. Um, uh, we lost power in here in the last 10 minutes, so uh, everyone's blaming the smart side, but the smart side hasn't been on. Uh, 
But it's a big issue for us because um, if we don't have power for our presentation, then we don't have a presentation. Mm. And so is all the software, everything's tweaked and you're happy with it, Josh? I'm going to go back to work. <laughs> As some of the more yeah. famous names begin to arrive for Tom's afternoon talk, he and Josh frantically try to iron out some last-minute technical hitches. I'm here to talk about the future, because I'm not interested in the past at all. And this is the first time that we've been able to show the full system. And it's kind of exciting bringing it back to the AA in a way, because to me, it's a little bit of a homecoming for the technology. Showing up. They're not, they're just not showing up. Is the network hub plugged in? Uh, they're, show, they're starting to show, they're showing up. They're, they're on. The smart stuff was supposed to come up after like 15 seconds when the drums went boom, boom, boom. And it didn't. And I was thinking, this is going to get really embarrassing. And uh, finally, the slab came up in the last five seconds of the music. So. Do you think at one point it's not going to come up? I was going to hide under the podium. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it seems like it uh, absolutely has terrific possibilities. As Tom was saying, it's kind of a marriage between sort of media and structure, which I think is incredibly innovative.